Afternoon live from the U.S. Capitol is Congressman Warren Davidson. Congressman, welcome again to the Bill Cunningham Show. And Warren, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, Bill. How are you doing? I'm doing well. Here we are at uh, about uh, 1.06 p.m. What's happening in the Congress right now? I'm watching the cable shows. All hell's breaking loose. What's happening in the House? Well, there's always plenty of drama on Capitol Hill, but the good news is we're about to pass tax reform. What are the odds? Uh, nearly certain, but, you know, the Senate's involved, so no <laughs> best. All right, uh, let's go over this. I'm watching the cable shows this morning about how evil the tax bill is. And I'm trying to watch MSNBC and not suffer from projectile vomiting. And uh, they keep running these polls that 55% of the American people oppose this. The 35% are in favor and 10% can't find their butt with both hands. So the 55% who oppose it, not one have read the bill because it's about 1,000 pages long. Secondly, they only re regurgitate back to the pollsters what the media tells them to think. Garbage in, garbage out. So the media has been relentlessly negative about this because it's Trump's tax bill. And you conservative Republicans are in favor of it, which means the Joe Scarboroughs are opposed to it. Can you tell the American people the three or four highlights of the tax bill that are germane to the to the uh, residents of your congressional district in Butler County, et cetera? Here's the biggest win. Uh, people are concerned. It's a bipartisan concern about the deficit now, and that's a real challenge for our country. It's great to see Democrats talking about deficit spending or yeah. deficits in general. So that's a big win. And then uh, the tax bill itself, what's the big win? Uh, the reality is, you think about the deficit, uh, tax revenue, cash into the government, um, has only gone up when the economy is growing. And when the economy is not growing, revenue to the government goes down, no matter what tax rates have been over the years. And so you look at under Obama, they were saying, you know, 1.5% is the new normal, 2% is good. The days of 3% are long gone. Off the expectation that we're going to pass tax reform, the economy has been growing nearly at 4%. So... Uh, the CBO score, which is almost always wrong, is wrong in this case because they're saying it's only going to grow the economy by an additional 0.4 to 0.8 percent. Well, it's already growing by an additional 2 percent just off the expectation. Right. And when the economy grows, take-home pay is going to grow. And then when you get into the cuts, the cuts that are in there are going to benefit working-class Americans. Yes, it's going to benefit wealthy people because they pay most of the taxes, uh, but it is going to benefit families. We've run scenario after scenario and people are going to get more take on pay out of this bill. Let's say you're a working schlep and you live in Bell Fountain, Ohio, or Van Wert, and you you take the standard deduction, you're not a fancy person, you don't have pass-throughs, you don't have 401Ks, and you take the standard deduction. Well, what does this tax bill do for a working schlep in Hamilton? Well, it's uh, straight away for everybody. If you say you're married, um, you right now your standard deduction is $12,000 and change. And... Uh, now it's $24,000. So effectively, your first $24,000 of income, the tax rate on that is 0%. Uh, then as you go through the rate structure, the rates get lower as you move through uh, on your taxable income. It keeps all the popular deductions, your mortgage deductions, charitable giving, 401K savings. There's a bunch of drama about that. Uh, it keeps all keeps all those, and the, the good news is it keeps medical expenses. So let's say you have a bad year and you spend a lot of money on medical bills. Uh, the bill that passed the House, one of the things I didn't like about it is it get rid of medical expense deductions. This one keeps it. So the final product, uh, for the most part, is better than what passed either body. And, and for rich people like Sheriff Richard K. Jones, the alternative minimum tax doesn't kick in until $1 million. So the ATM is... Uh, the impact of that is grossly reduced because it's $1 million. And the other thing is it keeps the mortgage deduction for interest up to $750,000. And that kind of stuff covers probably 99% of the American people. Not too many people like Richard K. Jones are rich. And he always worried about the alternative minimum tax. It doesn't kick in now to $1 million. And the, all of his homes he has in Boca Raton, for example, uh, he can deduct up to seven hundred fifty thousand dollars. Is that correct? Are those the two numbers? Well, that's it. Seven fifty for the mortgage deduction. So the vast majority of homes in uh, in the eighth congressional district would qualify for that. The vast majority of homes across Ohio would be that way, and overwhelmingly across the country. Uh, there's a few people in real expensive parts of the country still a little concerned. The other part is state and local taxes. You know, ours aren't very high compared to uh, New York or, or Illinois, but. 
you know, if you look at our state and local taxes, we have a, a kind of a high tax burden in the state. And it matters. So this goes not just for property taxes, which was the original bill that passed the House. Uh, it goes for income taxes at the state level, too. So those are also deductible. So the SALT, which is state and local taxes, and the, uh, and the real estate taxes, the limit on deductibility is $10,000. Is that correct? That's correct. So if you're a rich guy, like Richard K. Jones, and you have a <laughs> home that you pay $1,000 a month in real estate taxes, that's $12,000. You can deduct only ten thousand. Is that correct? Yeah, that's right. And you know, property taxes in in Ohio, you'd have to have a pretty impressive spread uh, to do that. Uh, so when you look at when you look at uh, who runs into that in Ohio, it's not a ton of folks. And, and I just uh, spoke to Simply Money's uh, Nathan Backrek. He said, "What you have to do, assuming uh, assuming you and the Congress pass uh, today and the Senate passes tonight or tomorrow." president's going to have some big signing ceremony allegedly on friday in mar-a-lago that uh, next week is a golden week in which people can prepay their 2018 uh, real estate taxes and get a full deduction but they can't repay their state and local taxes pay ahead of time because that's in the bill prohibiting it correct yeah, that's a that's a that's a um, a nuanced provision, and uh, you know those are some of the compromises they had to work out. But you know when you look at uh, how people are adjusting to it, that's one of the ways on the individuals people are adjusting to it. Corporations are starting to go. Do we need to restructure? Because frankly, they didn't get as big of a win for uh, pass throughs. The small you know small market main street businesses, uh, the average businesses around town. Um, they're taxed at a different rate than C corporations, which is generally your biggest corporations. And uh, that that's unfortunate. Um, and so people are saying, should we structure and create a C corp that does this and our other pass-through stuff does that? So people are uh, are reading through the bill now. It's been online since Friday. And, of course, the CPAs are going to keep making money. Oh, yeah. Uh, you know, H.K. Campbell and Al Recito is my account, and those guys are happy as can be. If you put me in charge, it'd be like a 20% across the board income tax and uh, exempt the first twenty-five or fifty thousand dollars. Everyone else pays 20%, and that eliminates the IRS and eliminates uh, accounting. But nonetheless, we can't have that because the accountant's got to be paid. Now, Warren Davidson, on a kind of a related matter, uh, Jesse Waters, who I watch on Fox News every now and then, uh, took the tax bill to a college campus and said. President uh, Obama has proposed the following, and he went over four or five elements of the tax bill because Obama proposed it. Ninety-one percent were in favor of it. Then he went to another, another college campus and said, President Trump has proposed the following, and he read exactly the same thing, and he got nine percent support and ninety percent opposed it. Hey, are some things in Washington simply radioactive because Trump's name is attached to him? Yeah, I mean, that's the whole theme behind the resistance movement. And unfortunately, uh, the resistance movement's a little more popular on college campuses. So, um, you know, they're, they're, they're out there blocking on core issues like tax reform, like health, fixing our health, broken health care economy. Uh, we're hopeful that they'll cooperate on infrastructure because that involves spending money. Um, but we'll see. Uh, hopefully there's a way to work together to get some good things done. And, you know, if, if Trump doesn't have popularity now with the wide swath of the American people, when ISIS has been defeated in Iraq, the uh, stock market's close to 25,000 on the Dow, we have an unemployment rate of 4.1%, you can get a 30-year mortgage for under 4%, you have the highest labor participation rate in the last 38 years. Everything that should be up is up, and everything that should be down is down, and America, foreign relations-wise, is really in good shape by any objective measurement. If Trump's popularity and policies right now do not cause him to have a high popularity, he's never going to have a high popularity because there's going to be difficulties in 2018 and 2019. God knows what the Chinese communists are going to do or the North Koreans. What are they going to do? Is it going to be a major successful terrorist attack on America? Is the Bitcoin thing going to pop? And all of a sudden... Stock market goes down by one third. We've not had a recession. None is on the horizon. It looks for a while. And, and so, when you work with the administration, Warren Davidson, Congressman, Eighth Congressional District, when you work with the administration, do, do you sense that no matter what they do right, 
they don't get the credit in the media, and they're never going to get the credit. Yeah, it's a little bit like Rodney Dangerfield. No respect, no respect. And uh, if you judge the president by what he's doing, not just by what he's saying, I mean, he's getting a lot of good things done for the country, and a lot of times he's saying things that need to be said. And really, I've been impressed lately. He's tightened up his shock group. I was glad he went on uh, national TV last night, laid out a uh, national yeah. security strategy. I'd like to see him do another primetime address and really break down this tax bill so that he talks past all the narrative around it. Have you encouraged him not to get into Twitter wars with people like LeVar Ball or with Senator uh, Gillibrand? Have you encouraged him to stick to policy and leave the personality stuff to the side because it doesn't matter? I think almost everyone's encouraged him to that, but, you know, he's a stubborn guy. And, and his stubbornness helps us get a lot of good things done, too. But that's what I say. You go by what he does, not necessarily what he says. What right. he's doing is pretty good. All right, lastly. Uh, it's now uh, sitting here about uh, 121 p.m., 118 p.m. Tell me the next, when will you actually vote in the House on this bill? Uh, we're voting today on the bill uh, and uh, actually just voted on the rule. Uh, and, you know, that, that tees up the next vote. So uh, once we vote on the bill, uh, the Senate is maybe going to take action today, most likely tomorrow. And then hopefully we'll be uh, celebrating a win you know, uh, tomorrow, maybe at the White House, maybe not. But, uh, you know, it'll be ahead of Christmas, as the president asked and promised. Well, Warren Davidson, Congressman, 8th Congressional District, may you and yours have a Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, and Happy New Year. You're coming home. When are you coming back home where you belong? Well, when we make sure we don't shut the government down. So that may Oh, take that's a another while. issue, Hopefully. right? What's going to happen yeah. with that? The, the Democrats want chaos. They do want chaos, and again, they're working to stir it up. And uh, you know, what's popular is they usually just spend a lot of money. And I hope we don't uh, don't lose our minds here on spending after having gotten the win on tax reform. But uh, but yeah, that's the next fight, and it's already underway. Uh, well, you have to vote on that by Friday. Yes, we do. And will the government be shut down for Christmas? Well, I, I think that'd be a shocker if it were. I think there'll be a way to do it, but uh, you know, we're we're working on trying to get the play call right. I mean, the big thing is. Uh, the Democrats want to tie defense spending to, to domestic spending, and they're not necessarily joined at the hip. That's the way Obama did it, and we're trying to break that. The troops are due a pay raise January 1st, and if we just keep doing these CRs and kicking the can down the road, you know, we're going to have we're going to have some real problems. Yeah. Congressman, good luck to you, and uh, keep doing what you're doing. You're doing the work of the American people. Thank you. Thanks, Bill. You too. God bless.